Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. I'm joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 163, Expense Totals by Month. All right, so today's question sent in uh, from YouTube. We have this data down here, date, expense, and amount. And he wants to know if there's a formula. When you type in the end date for a month, it triggers, triggers the total expense for that particular month. I assume that we want totals for all of these. Well, formula, no, sure, yeah, Mike will be able to do a formula, but this is just, it's screaming. It's pivot, pivot table time. That's right, pivot table, it's screaming pivot table. So first, I'm gonna take this data, I'm gonna make it into a real table with control T. My table has headers, yep. That way when I add more data later, it will continue to update, insert pivot table. I'm gonna go to a new worksheet, click OK, and down the left-hand side, I'm going to click Expense, and then Amount, and across the top, watch this, so temporarily, I'm going to put Date across the top, I'm going to choose the very first Date field, come here to either the Analyze tab in Excel 2013, or the Options tab in Excel 2010 or 2007 Group field, and I'm going to group that up to Months and Years like that, okay, and then I'm actually going to take those two fields and remove them from the uh, database, that way I just have one single amount. Then, insert, slicer, I'm going to choose both the date field and the years field, click OK. They're going to go right in the middle of the screen, but I'm going to rearrange them like this. Let's see, those years are nice and small, I'm going to change it to three columns, bam, and then date, which is actually month, will probably go three columns as well. Change it up like this, and change the colors. All right, so now, if we want to see uh, total expense for March of 2014, there's our answer, April of 2014, January through March. Uh, very, very versatile way to see these totals without creating a single formula using a pivot table. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Oh, the pivot table, the table feature, and probably one of the more beautiful aspects of Excel, slicers to pick your criteria for your calculation. Oh, man, and I'm stuck doing formulas. I can't use those slicers. All right, let's go over to this sheet here. We'll build the formula in this cell. Hey, but we have our list of expenses right in the sheet, so why don't we add a data validation drop-down list because our formula is going to have to look at criteria for expense and the end of the month. All right, so we're clicking in this cell, Alt-D-L to open up data validation dialog box, tab to get to allow, L to get to list, tab to get to source, and boom, I simply highlight. Notice it says in cell drop-down, click OK. That is pretty cool. Now the end of the date is going to be a criteria, so I'll put 8 slash 31 slash 2014. Now I'm actually going to put the, the whatever end date in this cell, but I'm going to build my formula. So any date, if I put 8 25 2014, the formula will still know to get all of the operation expense for the eighth month in 2014. Hey, we'll use some ifs. Some ifs is great, it can add with one or more criteria, some range. Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace. We don't need to lock it because we're not copying it anywhere. Comma. We're going to have criteria range one, criteria range two, and three. So we'll start with expense. Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace. The criteria to go with that B range is going to be, hey, operations for this particular selection. Comma criteria range two. We'll have to actually use the date range twice. Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace comma. Now, criteria 2 and 3. We're going to take this date, but I need to get the first of the month from that particular date. Not only that, but I have to look at this column and say, are any of the dates greater than or equal to this, uh, which will be the first of the month. So here in criteria, we'll build our comparative operator in double quotes, greater than or equal to, and join it to well, I need to get to the first of the month from that, so I'll use end of the month. No way, check this out. 
I'll say, give me the end of the month of that, comma, and we will use the months. If I put 0 here, it'll give me the end of this month. If I put 1, it gives me the end of next month. But if I put minus 1, it gives me the end of last month. That's a serial number, so when we close this off, we add 1 to get to the first of whatever month is of the date in that cell, comma. And now we'll get our date range, control shift down arrow, control backspace. So that's our criteria range 3, comma. Criteria 3, we're going to say in double quotes, less than or equal to end double quote join. And you know what? Just to be robust, I'm going to use end of the month of this, comma, 0 says give me the end of the month. Now, that's ridiculous here. We're assuming that they'll always have 830 or whatever the end of the month is here. But just in case someone puts 825 or 830, boom, that will get the end of the month. Right now, this is giving the same serial number as the serial number in the cell. All right, let's see if this works. Control-Enter, Control-Shift-4 to add currency. Let's try it. Let's change this to the 25th. And boom, our formula is working. If I change this to miscellaneous, just like that. If I change this to 2 slash 1 slash 2015, instantly I get for miscellaneous, February 2015, the total expenses. All right, throw back to Mr. Excel. Hey, Mike, that was ingenious. Using EO month to get back to the first of this month, minus 1. Takes us to the end of the last month, plus one. What a brilliant way to go. Uh, great, great formula there. So two different solutions, pivot table or formula. Another great example of uh, different ways to solve things in Excel. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun. It's Dueling Excel time.